Now, with all the world going crazy over coronavirus, not without reason, so even more people start considering working from home options and even more people start asking questions like how do I become a work at home specialist? And when people ask me of how they can actually earn decent incomes and not mind any natural and artificial disasters, my answer is the same all the time and it's true and biased at the same time and that is become an IT specialist. Now, there are options beyond IT that allow you to work from home and earn decent wages and I have talked about these options in that video of mine and in this video of mine because if you're new here, this channel is all about online businesses, work at home careers, tech jobs that allow you to work from home and career tips so you might like to subscribe and click the notification bell to not miss any of the new episodes and if you're a veteran here, welcome back to Afghan. Now, before we jump into the steps that allow you to become a high paid IT specialist that can work from home, make sure to grab my ultimate guide on IT professions, it's free so make sure to grab your copy below and this will help you to define a direction. This guide includes both tech and non-tech jobs that if you are a tech person or if you are a non-tech person, you might find your options there. And if we haven't officially met, my name is Olga and I run my software development agency from home, so you might find a lot of home-based businesses related stuff and tech related stuff on this channel another reason to subscribe now let's jump straight into the steps let's assume that you are a brand new person to the it industry and you want to shift to this industry what's the first thing you should do obviously that is defining your direction aka who you really want to be. I mean, that might seem pretty basic, but remembering my own path as an IT specialist, I didn't really know who I want to become and I didn't really know, I don't know, the direction I would like to take. I just got into IT by chance. I mean, I have a tech background. I have a master's degree in telecommunications, but telecommunications is not IT. I have worked before I jumped, before I shifted into IT, I worked in telecommunications for years and then I was proposed with a job as a content writer and social media manager at an IT company. I knew, I mean, close to nothing about IT world, but I jumped <laughs> straight into this opportunity and Pretty soon I became an IT sales manager, then I shifted to business development, then to account management, then I started my own software development agency. But before I did that, I was considering to shift to some tech job. I considered to become a project management, I mean move more to the tech side because I was pretty much bored talking to people. <laughs> That's not the thing, of course. But I mean, until you make your first moves, you don't really know who you want to become. But that's not the reason to not consider at least the direction. Now, from my perspective, in order to shift to an IT world and become a high paid remote <laughs> specialist, you have to be realistic and set yourself realistic goals. My advice is consider what skills you already have. Are you a good writer? You can become a tech writer or a creative copywriter for an IT industry. Or are you uh, good in uh, some sales and you become an IT salesperson? Are you good in social media? So then you can apply to become a social media manager for an IT company or a PR manager maybe. If you are more on the tech side, then the fastest way to jump into the IT world would be to become a QA engineer. Their training period does not take like a, a, too long. If you, are, you want to dive even deeper into the tech side and you want and you enjoy coding and you want to become a coder, this will take a little bit longer but it is totally worth it but my advice is if you have like zero tech background if you know nothing about programming if you suck at math if you suck at solving logical problems if you have like very basic English or no English at all, my advice is don't set yourself unrealistic goals. This will discourage you from taking further steps as soon as you meet an obstacle that you cannot overcome or meet a task that you just cannot solve because you don't have a background or you don't have skills or it's not your talents you will get discouraged and you will drop the entire idea and you will actually miss a lot of other opportunities that might have come your way. Don't think that you will complete some online course on programming and start making zillions. No, it's not about that. And moreover, well, my advice and I am urging you, you don't want to become 
someone who produces hoji code in Russian that is Govna code. <laughs> you don't want someone who do, who does that. You want to become a professional. If you want to be a high paid professional, you want to be as tech savvy as possible. Now the second step after you defined your direction would be to get your education. Again, that is pretty basic. Even if you're if you decided to take a non-tech direction in IT world, like if you decided to become a tech writer or a copywriter or a social media manager or a marketing manager, it doesn't mean that you can skip this that step. Never so. You, you cannot skip your research part and this might take weeks. If you want to become a tech specialist and if going to the university is out of the question, you are old, broke or simply don't want to lose five years because, before you can actually start working as an IT specialist, consider alterna alternative options and I'm pretty much urging you doing so. Take an online course, take an offline course, do your research. There is a lot of tons of free stuff out there in the web. Subscribe to tech YouTube channels. There are a lot of YouTube channels where you can learn a lot from its creators in order to become an IT specialist and so on. This is the way my husband took. He picked up Java Direction. He decided, he, so first, he again, he did his research and he decided that Java programming language suits his, him best and he decided to took this direction and he learned everything possible on the web that was free and he was subscribed to a lot of YouTube channels and he still is, I, pre I presume. And he learned a lot about Java and as soon as he realized that he is not actually going to throw it halfway that he's moving in the right direction and he actually enjoys what he learns. He took free pet courses and he started his further education. These were offline courses. And he started on weekends, he started at nights, he started in the evenings. And let me assure you, it was totally worth it. This is the way that anybody can take wherever you are, wherever, whatever your background is, you can do this as well. Now, a sub step here is if you don't have any academic background, if you don't have any degree, and even if you do, consider getting some certificates that will prove your all sort of expertise in some sort of field, for example, in some programming language. You can take this step uh, a little bit later further along the way and actually this way you will benefit more because you will already be having some sort of understanding what you are doing and if you actually need it. At later stages, you, they will add up to your creditability in the eyes of future employers and they will contribute knowledge base to your uh, learning path as well. Like Cisco and CompTIA offer a number of upper level certification exams and you should also look into Microsoft Certified Solutions Expert certifications. Now the third step is communication part. This one is optional but highly recommended both by me and by all the other experts out there on the web because uh, this one can be done and it actually should be done simultaneously with your tech education in whatever form it might be. Because tech education will prepare you to become a tech specialist, but without communication you might experience a lot of problems further along the way. And I highly uh, encourage you to take some speaking courses or communication courses, any courses on soft skills, because soft skills are crucial. I've had a lot of candidates that were passing through interviews with our clients and they uh, had to enter our clients' teams and they passed all the tech tests, but they didn't pass soft test skills. And honestly, those were not those stupid tests like what spiritual animal you are, or any other stupid tests that you know all of you know about but these were um, these were kind of tests what was the hardest problem in the communication part with your team and how did you solve it and when the person answered this question you can sense you can feel his attitude his or her attitude to this question and if this person is arrogant or rude or if he or she has any racist problems I had one candidate who refused to work with uh, certain ethnicities and so on. You can feel whether this person is adequate or not. So if you don't pass soft skills part of the interview, you won't get the job. 
And for non-native speakers of English, of course, a must-take step would be to learn English. It is true that you can become a programmer, an IT specialist and work for your local companies even if you don't know English or if even if your English uh, skills are pretty much basic, but most probably you won't be able to find a remote job uh, and you most probably won't be able to become a high pad IT specialist who works from home because most remote teams are international and within international teams we all speak English and if you want to become an IT spe specialist who actually works from home and that is what our video is about then learning English is a must and this one should be taking along with your tech education and after you've gone through all of these basics and you've got your education in whatever form it might be, your research. And by the way, these steps might take you from a few weeks to a couple of years. It depends on your situation and on your pace and on how lazy you are. You are the next step for you would be to apply as an IT specialist to multiple IT companies until you find your position. Now, if you're young and you have time, you can volunteer to your local organizations and local non-profit organizations and ask them, uh, well, whatever computer issues they have faced with and whatever issues they need to be solved. And you can volunteer to offer your skills and your solutions for free. And then you will add up this experience to your portfolio. And this way you will not only be having some pet projects or learning projects or, uh, well, uh, anything on serious but actually a working project that has been put to production and this will add up a lot to your credibility but if you're a family man or a woman and you cannot lose a lot of time working for someone for free i suggest you taking this route and i have actually supervised my husband's route going into it it works for him and it will work for you Sorry I had to switch to my iPhone because my cam camera just died. So uh, the second part of our video you will be watching from my iPhone. Now back to the topic. If you're a family man or a woman who cannot lose his or her time trying to find a job by uh, trying all the free options, I suggest you go this way. And again, this might seem basic, but it works. And the first one is create great CV. Now, if you don't have anything to put on it yet. Of course you don't because you have just started your path as an IT specialist. At least put on all the skills that you acquired while you're going into IT journey. All the uh, online courses that you took, all the offline courses that you took, outline all the programming languages, all the databases you have tried to work with, outline all the languages that you speak, uh, and all the languages that you program on or that you have tried. Outline all the pet projects and all the test uh, projects that you have done. This will add up a lot to uh, the person who will be viewing your CV. At least he or she will be able to understand whether you actually took, whether you actually make made an effort in order to uh, enter IT. Now, CV is a great photo and with a great layout will attract HR's attention. And these skills that you have outlined at this pet project that you have outlined in your CV will help to uh, grab the attention of the tech person who will be reviewing your CV. So make sure you have both. If you don't have any experience in uh, combining your CV, I highly recommend you asking someone to help you. Uh, there must be someone who will help you for free if you are on a budget and if you cannot, um, you know, uh, pay uh, some professional HR people to uh, combine your CV. I suggest you turning to someone you know out of the IT world who might help you to uh, create your CV. Well, in my husband's case, it was myself and you might know some friends who work in IT companies and who will be able to help you outline a great CV. And I highly suggest you to ask non-tech people to combine your CV because when a tech person combines his or her CV, it shows <laughs> and it is not attractive and it is not something that you are looking for when you're applying for the first time because if you're a senior tech person you don't need a CV at all because your experience speaks for itself and your background speaks for itself but if you're a junior person 
you need a great CV to at least grab HR people's attention. And the next one is basic, but I will tell it anyway. Apply, apply, apply anywhere you can, not just as the companies you, work to, you want to work in. Your first IT job might not be your dream job, and most probably it won't be a dream job. But some of us are lucky enough to get the job they want. Or I know a lot of cases when people started to love their job that they took just, you know, because they it will be okay as a first job. Apply online, on LinkedIn, use the power of networking, uh, ask recruiters that you're familiar with so that they will help you to actually uh, will get some offers or they might he have heard about openings that you might not have heard and they will help you to apply. So use the power of networking, it, will, it works like a charm. So apply everywhere, ask everyone whether they need some junior person and uh, I'm sure that you will get some offers to be interviewed. And the next step would be go to interviews. Don't be scared. Even, of course, if you're a first timer in IT, of course, it's natural that you won't be able to answer all the questions. So don't be scared. A friend of mine who applied at like 20 companies and went to like dozens of, dozens of interviews said a brilliant thing and I wanted to share it with you. And that is, even if you know like 10 answers out of 100, there will be that one company where you will be asked these same questions and you will be able to answer them and pass them. So go to the interviews, don't be scared. There will be that one company that will become your gateway to IT world. Of course, do your best at interviews and get prepared for the interviews. For example, if you are applying to a sysadmin position, read everything related to system administration in ahead. If you're applying to some DevOps position, open Google and, well, Type in how to pass DevOps interview or what questions or typical questions at DevOps interviews and go through them. Prepare yourself accordingly, of course. There will be that one company that will become your gateway to the IT world and then it will be the question of your willingness to learn and your capabilities because Entering IT company is one thing and maintaining your position there is another because I have seen companies who were like des desperate, they needed a lot of IT specialists and they hired, I mean, all the people with and without skills and then they did the following thing. Those who uh, showed results, they uh, were asked to stay and those who didn't, they were fired like uh, after a couple of months or after three months of their working in the company. So of course you want to do your best, but don't be scared. There will be that one company that become your gateway and then it will be up to you if you are willing to learn, if you're scrupulous, if you're a detail-oriented person, if you actually want this job so much that you will learn constantly, you're welcome to the IT world. Now, the second part of our today's episode should be about getting a home-based job as an IT specialist. But if you're a junior IT specialist, I strongly advise you to first work offline. I mean, of course not during the epidemic and you won't be able to find a job, I believe, offline during this corona thing. But if you're a junior uh, developer or a junior person who wants to enter IT, be it a tech writer, be it a tech or non-tech position, I strongly advise you to first work in an offline company for all the reasons that I mentioned in this video of mine. Because first thing, not all people are suited for work at home jobs. And second thing, watch this video because I mentioned a lot of reasons there. Once you're ready, I don't see any problem you're getting a remote job as an IT specialist because not nowadays, because nowadays a lot of companies consider hiring remote employees and well, a lot of companies go remote, even in industries that were always considered to be offline industries like banking. For example, JP Morgan starts to uh, hire uh, remote employees. I mean, that's it's insane. Their policy never allowed that. But nowadays companies start to reconsider their policies and start to hiring remote employees. By the way, if you want to learn more about companies that hire remote employees nowadays the best companies that hire remote employees check out this video of mine where i give you a list of the best companies for it people now if you like this episode
episode, make sure to give me a thumbs up, comment below and put the video on auto play. And of course, grab my ultimate guide on IT professions that include both tech and non-tech positions so that you will be able to pick up your favorite direction. And of course, check out my course for work at home professionals that um, you might like. All the links are in the description below. Thanks for watching till the very end. Have an amazing week. Have a great mood. Stay healthy. Take good care about yourself and your nearest and dearest. And see you next Wednesday. Bye.